My name is Sonia White Crosdale. I am a survivor of Stevens Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis, SJS and TEN for short. SJS, Stevens Johnson syndrome, is an illness that pretty much burns the body from the inside out. It is normally a reaction to a medication, an allergic reaction to a medication. And in some cases, such as mine, there is no known cause. TEN, toxic epidermal necrolysis, that is an extreme reaction to the same illness, but that's when your pretty much your whole body is covered in sores or blisters. This all started on May 19th, 2011. It was a weekend I got home from work and I was just feeling like I was having a bad case of the flu. And so I decided that I will go to the walk-in clinic. I was prescribed some eye drops for pink eye because my eyes were red all over, red and itchy. And I took the eye drop and then within hours, my vision became so blur. My voice became a hoarse rasp and I just was feeling so unwell. I decided to go to the emergency room. And when I got to the emergency room, my fever was spiking and nothing would keep it down. And so as far as I can remember, I woke up the next morning and I was in hospital admitted wherein my whole body was covered in burn-like blisters. My eyes were fused shut, I couldn't see. I actually spent approximately six weeks in hospital fighting for my life. I was spitting up blood mucus. I couldn't eat, they had to put a NG tube in. I had to have a, an indwelling catheter because the same way my body was burning on the outside, it was all happening on the inside. They literally thought I would die. And luckily they were able to diagnose me as Stevens Johnson syndrome. And so they started treatment, IVIG. And that's like a blood serum that they infused in my body. And that stopped the burn for me. That was 11 years ago. Today, they have more improved treatment that can prevent your body from burning the way mine did. Because I was able to smell like flesh burning while I was lying in my hospital bed, not even knowing what that was. I had one of the extreme reactions to Stevens Johnson syndrome because it, it eventually trans transformed into TEN. TEN is when 30% or more of your body surface is covered with sores. Not everybody goes to that extreme. Not everybody gets that because there are a lot of people who comes out of it with um, not a lot of burn and they're able to return to normal functioning, normal living with a bit of challenges. After six weeks, I walked out of hospital a completely new person. My eyelashes, my eyelids were completely burnt off. My face was black and white all over from the sores. I couldn't see, I could hardly talk, and of course I couldn't eat. I pretty much thought I was sent home to die because there was no instructions for me to what to expect or what to do. And while at home, my hair fell out. Like I literally was able to take my hair out in my hand when I hold it like that. My fingers, the, the nails came out in big chunks like you have the nail just lift off. And the same thing happened with the sole of my feet and my toenails. 
I was just literally falling apart and there was not much support to tell me what to do or what to expect. I have to change pretty much my diet because the foods that I enjoyed eating, I cannot eat them anymore. And it took me a while to figure out some specific foods that would trigger a reaction in my mouth. And when I say that, when I eat certain food, immediately sores start to form in my mouth. And I get that all the time. Stevens Johnson syndrome is usually an allergic reaction to a medication. In my case, I was not on any medication at all. So until this day, the cause of this reaction within me remains unknown. And that makes it very scary because not knowing what caused it, it makes it a challenge for me every day because now I don't know what to stay away from and what not to do so it does not reoccur. And there is a high probability that um, it reoccurs in individuals. And so um, whether it's viral, environmental, or whatever, the cause remain unknown. And I have done so many testing, including the genetic testings and all of that. This is the 11th year of surviving Stevens-Johnson syndrome. Having come from a place where I was a burnt victim, totally charred, it has affected my life over the years. And yes, some things have gotten better, but I have to live with all these long-term effects of it. In the first place, um, what you really see is an outward appearance of the shell that's within. That's basically how I can say it because I am so drained. I have no energy. It has depleted all my energy. I can't even walk fast, let alone run. And I struggle with that every day. Also, I have to wear these special glasses with the rubber suction inside because it has left me with severe photophobia. I just cannot see very well. My lips are constantly sore and sometimes they are so red and inflamed. I have to use special um, utensils. And when I eat, I have to put the food directly into my mouth, not touching my lips, because if the food touch my lips again, that is a recipe for sores. Also, my, the palm of my hands and the sole of my feet, they are extremely sensitive because my skin is so soft and thin. When I came home, my whole body began to fall apart. All these things were happening to me. I tried to get some help within the community just to have a sense of what's going on. I was told, you're lucky to be alive. You have to count your blessings. But there was nobody who would tell me what to expect or what my road ahead would look like. And so, my background, my profession as a nurse and as a social worker, I realized that there is a huge lack for this type of illness within the community. And so as a result of that, with the help of some friends and medical professionals, I was able to start Stevens Johnson Syndrome Canada. And that is an organization that's a registered charity here in Canada. And our aim is to provide awareness, education, and support for individuals going through this illness, Stevens Johnson syndrome, and also to educate the public about this illness and, of course, support them along the way and provide them with resources and links to professionals who can help them. We provide monthly 
support group we are individuals from all walks of life. Wherever you are, you can log on to our, our support group. We meet monthly via Zoom and we provide emotional support and share our struggles and also our successes with each other to act as a strength for one another. Some of the things that we talk about is also the mental aspect of having survived Stevens Johnson syndrome. And this is a huge component for us as survivors because we grieve and we go through the full grieving process just as if you have lost someone and go through that grief. We grieve through that because you may wonder what do we grieve? We grieve the individuals we used to be because we are no longer that individual. And we go along the grieving process and fluctuates as one would normally do. But we do provide um, mental health support for individuals who come to us and help to walk us through this process because we know it is challenging. And not only that, we have medical professionals who join us and provide us with support from a medical standpoint so we can have a better understanding of what's going on with us. And at least three times per year, we have town hall meetings where we have a whole bunch of professionals come together on Zoom and talk about different aspects of the illness and provide support around that. And we have individuals share their stories and encourage each other. Because on this journey, it's a sad and lonely one. And together, I find that we are stronger because we learn from each other. My health remains are roller coaster. One day I might feel vibrant and strong like I can move mountains and the next day I can't even lift a paper clip. So that's basically um, the situation with me. But of course there have been improvements from where I used to be to where I am today. But not fast enough for me because I still would like to get back to that person in the room that keeps the party going and get the party started and get everyone to laugh and just have fun. But of course, I always have my rock by my side, who is my husband, who reminds me when I am thinking in the mindset of 11 years prior to engage in certain activity. He's always there to hold my hand and say, "Han, you know you can't do this. And then I snap back to the reality that, oh my goodness, yeah, I really can't. So it has been a roller coaster um, of health challenges, but I'm hanging in there. I must tell you though, coming out of Stevens Johnson syndrome, they are a lot of individuals who are left with, um, with physical scars. They're individuals who have come out of it with, um, with blindness. There are some who end up with um, tracheostomies and a whole bunch of different um, situations that happen. Some people lost their hair completely and are totally bald. However, it affects you varies from one person to the next. My husband has been my strong tower. He has been my rock. He never left my side. He developed a system when I was in hospital because I could not be left alone because I was suctioned constantly. And he developed a system where he organized individuals to take shifts to be at my bedside. But today, he still remains my strong tower. He remains my rock, my eyes, because 
yes, certain times I cannot see. And so he is there 24 seven. He has become my meal tester because in order for me to eat certain food, I need somebody to taste it, to see if it is something that my palate can, um, can tolerate. And so that's what my husband does. I cannot lift heavy stuff. So he's there to carry the weight of my whole existence. And he does it happily and cheerfully. And I am so grateful to have him at my side. So my dear husband, thank you. And thanks to my family and friends and all the care supporters out there. I must say I'm very fortunate to be alive today because not many people survive this illness. And mostly because of um, delayed treatment and lack of diagnosis. So it is good for individuals to be aware of the symptoms because it starts off with the flu-like symptoms and then you start getting blisters all over your body and the very high temperature that will not go down. So get some medical assistance. Find a medical professional, find an emergency room and talk to somebody because this illness, if left undiagnosed and untreated, it can and will result in death. I was at the peak of my health in life 11 years ago, and this was the last thing that I would expect that could happen to me. And so I just want to bring the awareness to everybody that this illness, it does not matter your gender, your race, or your profession. It doesn't matter who you are. It affects anyone from any, any walk of life. So it can happen to you, but at least in hearing this video, you will be aware of the symptoms and you know what to watch out for. So you are a step ahead of the game.